Welcome to the Leading with Purpose. Each episode is an exciting journey, offering an exclusive opportunity to hear from Vermont's impactful leaders. Whether from the fields of business, government, or the nonprofit sectors, these leaders share their personal and professional experiences, unveiling the challenges and achievements that have shaped their paths. Leading with Purpose elevates itself by providing viewers with an insider's look at dynamic organizations that promote positive change throughout Vermont. Join us on this transformative journey as Leading with Purpose unveils the stories of leaders shaping organizations and transforming Vermont with purpose-driven leadership. Discover the power of leadership that goes beyond success, leaving a legacy of positive change in its trail. We have Elaine Haney, Emerge Vermont Executive Director with us today. Thank you for being with us uh, and thank you for here. coming our show. So um, can you provide a brief overview of your leadership journey and how it led you to where you are today? Sure. My leadership journey is a combination of volunteer work and professional work, um, like a lot of people, I think. Um, I started out volunteering in my community in my kids' school, um, a parent-teacher organization, and eventually wound up um, being appointed to the planning commission in my community. And then um, from there, I became a library trustee, which was an elected position. And then I became a village trustee. Um, I've been involved in local government for about 15 years now. And um, I've also been the chair of my town select board. And now I am currently a city councilor in Essex Junction. And um, alongside that, in my professional work, uh, I had owned a business. I'd owned a bookstore for several years, and so I had a lot of employees. And then um, transitioned to um, working at the Vermont State Colleges. I was the director of the chancellor's office. I kind of worked my way up through the ranks there. And now I'm the director of Emerge Vermont. So um, I think everything I've done has sort of built on the previous position and uh, increased responsibility and leadership roles throughout both my community and professional work. Yeah, it sounds very rich experience, leadership it has journey. Been a big variety, <laughs> which I like, a lot of variety. Yeah, so how would you describe your leadership style and how has it evolved over the course of your career and how your leadership contributes to both organizational success and community impact? I think my leadership style is kind of a combination of what was needed at the time, depending on the role. So um, I definitely consider myself a collaborative leader. I really prefer to have as many opinions as I can before making a decision. I want to hear from folks, whether they're staff members or members of the public, um, so that I have a fully informed uh, decision-making capability, which isn't always possible, but at least I try to get as much as I can. Um, also, what's really important is relationship building. So I try hard to be a good team player and to build strong relationships with my fellow board members, with staff. Um, I'm very, as an elected official, I'm very dependent upon staff because they are the experts who provide the information that I need to make decisions. Um, and having fellow board members all being on the same page and being cordial and trusting each other is really important. So relational leadership is important to me. Um, lastly, I think I do a lot of, um, I think I would call it role modeling. Um, I do my homework. I do a lot of research before I make decisions. Um, I do a lot of um, outward, you know, looking around to see what's going on. Um, I have a lot of conversations with impacted people. So um, I think that people know me as a team player, as a hard worker, and that I do my homework. And so they know that when they work with me, they're getting the best that I have to offer on a particular thing. So I wouldn't say that that's a particular leadership style, um, but it's evolved over time. And the newest leadership kind of model that I'm interested in right now is adaptive leadership um, because having been in local government for so long, I understand now that everything is a system and adaptive leadership helps understand pieces of the system and how everybody looks at the system 
and helps you identify the different parts, the levers that you can pull to change the system, or at least make good decisions. So um, I guess the bottom line there is that it evolves over time, and it means overall that um, my community can trust me to do the work, find out what I need to know, listen to them, but also make decisions on behalf of the entire community or organization that are in the best interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is important to create that balance, right? Yeah. So what I know about all the things happening and what are my decisions and also what other people want from right. me to represent their ideas. That's right. And yeah. it's also important to be honest with folks because, you know, you may be limited in what you can do. Maybe there's a statute that you have to follow or some rules around funding and residents don't always know that. So you need to also bring that to, to bear mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So um, can you share a specific initiative or project where your um, organization has made a meaningful contribution to the local community? It could be your professional uh, uh, position or um, your um, political sure. position. Yeah. Well, I would have to point to my current position as director of Emerge Vermont. Um, our job is not community-based, it's statewide. So I'm incredibly proud of how we've impacted Vermont with our work. Our, my job is to recruit and train Democratic women to run for office. And so I go all over Vermont talking to women who want to run for office, who want to support other women running for office. And we offer training all year long on how to do that. And so we've had you know almost 200 people go through our training and the impact has been remarkable. In the legislature, we have increased the number of women to 45%, which is the highest ever in our history. There are now five women of color in the legislature, which is the same amount as has been over the course of the entire history of Vermont. And four of those women are affiliated with Emerge Vermont. And there are um, only a third of select board members are, are women across the state. And I just completed a training of women interested in running for school board and select board. So my goal is to give the tools to run for office to these women who show up for training already rock stars. They are already great leaders in their community and what they do with the tools that we give them is astonishing. And so I'm really proud of their impact on the community and being able to give those tools is very empowering for me and for them because what they do benefits Vermont, and um, I'm incredibly proud of them. Yeah, I, I can uh, hear this from your voice. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a great program, and I'm happy to say that I am one of the great. You are one of the people I'm most so proud I know of. How it is impa impa <laughs> impactful. Yeah. So, uh, so in what ways do you believe purpose driven leadership can transform not only organization but also entire communities? Purpose-driven leadership is very important, and how I'm trans, uh, interpreting that is by having a very clear, easy-to-understand goal and having the entire team focused on that goal. Um, sometimes people interpret that as having a, an, an inner purpose as a leader, but I see it more as everyone working towards the same goal together. And a great example of that that I have is... Um, uh, I, so I live in Essex Junction, and we were a village inside the town of Essex. And we had a decades-long problem of taxation related to the, the, the village and town model. And the residents of Essex, Essex Junction decided at one point that they really wanted to separate from the town of Essex and become an independent city. This was in 2021. And they needed to um, educate the community on what that meant and then instruct folks on what was coming in terms of voting. And so I was tapped to lead the effort to educate everybody and provide outreach information. And the big thing about having a clear goal is that suddenly the goal is what's compelling people to participate. And you know you're doing a really good, you have a really good goal when you have volunteers who are just coming out of the woodwork and you've never met them before. A lot of times on a 
volunteer project, you know everybody. It's all the same people who show up to do things together. But with this initiative, it was called Our Village, Our Voices. We were meeting people, residents, who were so compelled by the mission of becoming a city that they just came out and wanted to help. And it was a wonderful experience. And over the course of a year, not even a year, we canvassed over 3,000 households in our community. We reached as many voters as we possibly could. And then on the proof of our success was that on election day, which was a November with nothing else on the ballot in an off election year, over 50% of our registered voters turned out and the question passed with an 88% vote margin. So 88% of the people who voted that day wanted to become a city. And then we went through the legislature, the governor signed our new charter and on July 1st, 2022, the city of Essex Junction was born and it was an incredibly proud moment. And the city turned out, it, we, we had hundreds and hundreds of people come celebrate our accomplishment. And it was all because we had this very clear goal. Everybody knew what we were working towards and everybody had a role in making it happen. And it was a huge success. Yeah, it's a great story, which also answered my next question. But if you wanna share um, another success story highlights that approach we can hear, but you just answered this question too. That really yeah. is my, yeah. my best and favorite example of how a purpose-driven uh, goal is, um, brings people together and, and makes leadership easy mm -hmm. when you're all working towards the same goal. Yeah, so do you want anything to add? Because I have one more question <laughs> oh, sure. for you. Well, um, you know, I would say there's two things I've learned over the course of my professional and volunteer development as a leader. And one of them is that you absolutely have to be open to change. It could be change that's imposed upon you, like maybe a new law or a change in your business or your company, your organization. It could be finding out that you're wrong and you have to reassess your position and you have to admit that you're wrong and maybe make changes. Um, that can be very difficult. Or it could just be that situational things have changed and you have to like, you know, reorient or pivot. You can't be closed off to change because then you can't be effective. And in order to be a good leader, I think you have to be flexible with change and able to help other people through it, which is very hard. Change is very hard for some people. So that's one thing I've learned. The other thing I, would, I have learned the hard way is don't do it alone. If you're wanting to be a leader, if you are a leader, you can't do it in a vacuum. Um, I owned my own bookstore, which I referred to earlier. And um, unfortunately, we had to end up closing it after a few years for a variety of reasons. But one of the biggest reasons was because I tried to do it all by myself. I didn't have any mentors. I didn't seek assistance when things were starting to look rough. And it was not a good decision on my part. And I have a lot of regrets about what I could have done differently there. Since then, I have made it a point to seek out guidance from people I trust to help me along my way. And it doesn't have to be one mentor. I have what I call my personal board of directors. It's a group of, I don't know, a bunch of people who I trust, who I go to, mostly women, um, to answer different questions and give me guidance on certain things when I need them. And, and I do the same for them. So. I would absolutely recommend not going it alone if you're a leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great key, uh, key takeaways, right? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, can you please share a leadership uh, code, like statement with us that inspire you in your leadership journey? Absolutely, and I kind of have two, I hope that's oh, okay. Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> My first one is from Shirley Chisholm, the great, First, uh, she was the first black congresswoman elected from New York City in 1968. And she had a wonderful quote that said, if you don't have a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And it says so many different things. First, it says you deserve to be at the table. Second, it says you can make room for yourself. And third, it says be resourceful, right? So um, my whole goal throughout all of my public service has been making sure that everyone has a seat at the table. And it could be at the city government level, it could be at a committee level, it can be at, at work. I've always tried to do my best to work on making sure voices of other people 
are, are at the table. And my second favorite quote is from Governor Madeleine Kunin. And I think other people have said this before, but um, her quote is, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And I have learned through experience that that is absolutely true. Either you're on the menu because people don't realize you exist, and so they make changes based on what they know, not even knowing that what you need is a thing, um, or also intentionally left out. And so I think it's absolutely necessary for elected officials and leaders in general to ensure that everybody who's impacted by a decision has some form of input at least being consulted on their opinion on what's about to be decided. It's, it's, it's the basis of good decision making and good leadership. Yeah. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you for being with us today and sharing your leadership mindset, vision, and uh, experience with us. It was lovely conversation. As always, talking to you, it's such a fun. Yeah, thank you again for being with us today. Thank you, Palin. It was a pleasure to be here. As we conclude another inspiring episode of Leading with Purpose, we want to express our appreciation for joining us on this transformative journey. Throughout this series, we have had the privilege of delving into the lives and leadership styles of Vermont's most impactful individuals. The exclusive journey we have shared have allowed us to hear firsthand from influential leaders across the business, government, and nonprofit sectors. We have gained a unique understanding of what it truly means to lead with purpose. The heart of leading with purpose lies in its commitment to showcasing leaders who are committed to giving back to their communities demonstrating how leadership extends far beyond office walls. We hope you have been inspired by the generous actions of these extraordinary individuals, seeing firsthand how leadership can make a lasting impact on the community. We invite you to continue on this journey with us as Leading with Purpose explores the stories of leaders who are not only shaping their organizations, but also transforming Vermont through purpose-driven leadership. Thank you for being a part of this inspiring community, and we look forward to sharing more impactful stories of leadership and purpose in the episodes to come.